you know, Congressman Doggett has supported all three bills so far, uh, knowing that Congress is working on a fourth. We know that more help is needed and more federal funds, you know, will be coming. Um, still figuring out what that looks like. But, you know, we think that he thinks that not enough has been spent on those who need the relief the most, uh, specifically families and patients. We've been pushing for a special open enrollment period, uh, testing for documented, undocumented, insured, uninsured, just a more access for everyone. Um, so that I think that addresses one of the questions about what kind of package is this? It's the third of, of the fourth uh, thus far. Yeah, and so, and this one was like 2.2, had a lot of funding behind it. Um, so I guess I made the news, but it looks like more more things are being worked on. Yeah, and I'll say with an overview of CARES, the most significant piece people probably know about is the, uh, are the direct payments or the stimulus checks. So providing that direct assistance of the $1,200 to individuals based on uh, you know, income levels. And additionally, providing for more unemployment insurance, uh, which we can talk about. I know there were some questions on that. Um, more assistance for SNAP and food benefits, uh, knowing that's a huge need. Uh, eviction protections and mortgage forbearance for federally backed mortgages like FHA mortgages, uh, emergency paid leave, the small business uh, loans and grants, which we can talk more about, so a lot of funding there, and uh, student loan relief too. And I do want to mention that this, um, it, it pauses payments for federal student loan borrowers with, with certain federal loans so they're not going to be required to make payments until September 30th. Um, so, you, they, you know, folks would have to check with their specific lender, but um, it provides for that and uh, additional benefits for uh, tribal uh, governance and veterans. So a broad suite, but I think mostly the CARES Act is known for the small business funding and the direct assistance checks. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so maybe we'll get into more of the questions. I know that um, we had one, um, a few about the small business um, loan ones. I don't know if you have it in front of you. Yeah, I do. Um, so there are, uh, I'll highlight two programs that are, uh, folks are eligible for if you're a business or a 501c3, under 500 employees, or if you are a uh, sole proprietor, independent contractor, um, I know that was one of the questions. And yes, you are eligible um, with, with some caveats that I'll cover. So the two funding mechanisms there are the Paycheck Protection Program, or the PPP, which is meant to you know, give you capital to cover payroll expenses or the cost of retaining employees over eight weeks. Um, and the second one is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL, uh, for businesses with less than 500 employees or for those sole proprietors, independent contractors. And that's that quick infusion of cash to help you right now. I'll say I've been talking to some constituents with small businesses of five people and you know, they've applied for both, uh, specifically with EIDL, that is meant to be that funding, you know, right away. Um, so uh, additionally, let me pull this up real quick, because I just got a note about this, that independent contractors and self-employed can start applying to PPP tomorrow, April 10th. So... Okay. It was initially for those those smaller business. I don't know the the reason why, but um, they can start applying tomorrow. Now, the issue that people are running into, which was another one of your questions, is well, the banks are telling me no. We are seeing uh, from San Antonio to Austin that banks are saying we are at our lending capacity. 
for these PPP and IDLE loans. I am currently talking to local chambers of commerce to see if they have a list of banks that uh, we can share that are not at lending capacity yet. I know that's changing uh, literally by the hour. So I would recommend that folks call their bank or their lender uh, first thing to ask about, you know, are they, are they still accepting applications? Um, if not, you know, they can call our office and we're happy to try to direct them to a lender that we hear about. So I don't have a list in front of me of those lenders, but that's something I can follow up with uh, if you want to share that with your readers later. Yeah, and and so is there something, I'm sure this is something that, um, you know, the congressman is hearing from other congressmen as well in their regions that this is an issue. Um, is this something that we can get around? Like, is this something that now is starting to be looked at? Like, is there a way to help those banks then? Or, you know, because um, it does seem like they're just, people are getting very discouraged, I guess, when they're turned away from the bank immediately. Yeah. Um, well, first I'll say we know it's a problem. Um, and we, we know that it's really putting people in tough spots. Um, and we're talking uh, with SBA, you know, my, my colleagues in San Antonio with the regional office there are talking to SBA. We are inquiring as to when we can get timelines for this, for the people that have applied and then the people who need to apply. Uh, I believe part of the conversations for the uh, package, the fourth package being looked at are around providing more small business assistance. Um, so while that's not finalized yet, that is part of the discussion, knowing that with the massive influx of applications and interest, we will need to provide more federal funding. And that's just part of our you know, approach to this fourth package is we know from healthcare to small business that we, we do need more federal funds to cover these needs. And uh, that is definitely being looked at. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, nice question list here. Sure. Um, yeah, I know there was, so we, you kind of, so we guess we hit this one. Um, this is the, there, the question was, you know, um, are therapists, hairdressers, et cetera, able to collect unemployment if you work for yourself? Um, so that's the idle loans that you could apply for if you were, you know, a, a therapist, a freelance a photographer. I know in Austin, there's a lot of um, people who just have their like, you know, they're the only person who works at their small mm -hmm. business. Um, so that's the idle loans or they, that they could apply for? Yeah. So that's actually through unemployment is through the state, uh, through the Texas Workforce Commission. So SBA loans uh, are the idle and the PPP, which are those uh, uh, you know, loans you can apply for for that infusion of cash, uh, low interest or no interest. And then the Texas Workforce Commission is the entity responsible for rolling out unemployment insurance. Um, and though that is not under our jurisdiction, we've been dealing with it uh, with them a lot uh, recently, as, as you can imagine. Um, oh, did I lose you? Okay, uh, great. Uh, so we, so the Texas Workforce Commission uh, is the agency responsible for that. They are now accepting unemployment applications from Texans who are self-employed or gig workers, independent contractors who are out of work. If you've already applied, if you fall in that category and you've already applied for unemployment, you may have received a message that said you're not eligible. Well, now you are, and you're supposed to get notification soon from the Workforce Commission about those benefits that are available to you. Um, so the CARES Act you know, extended that unemployment insurance to those kinds of folks and then gave the guidance to TWC to roll that out. Um, so that should be rolling out soon. Okay, so for some of those folks, they might have two options. So if you were um, a photographer that had their own business or a hairdresser that, you know, worked out of your house or something, had your own business, you could apply now for unemployment, but also you might be able to look at that idle loan for your business to keep your business. Yeah, especially yeah. if you have, I think it's, it's, you know, it depends on your business. I think if, you know, you have maybe five or 10 employees you're struggling to meet those payroll costs, then the SBA programs are a good cash uh, infusion to help you cover those costs. If you're totally solo and uh, unemployment uh, 
will, will help cover your costs, then maybe that is the best option for you. Um, I know with both unemployment and the SBA programs, uh, there have been a lot of headaches, uh, to be honest. Um, people trying to get through and apply. And, you know, many people have contacted our office about the difficulties with TWC, you know, applying for unemployment because of that high volume. And we're, we're seeing the numbers, you know, every week of the hundreds of thousands applying. Um, they've ex TWC has said that uh, unemployment benefits will not be penalized for a delay due to the call volume um, for individuals affected by COVID-19 and they're eligible to be backdated. So if people experience that, that um, like a, a wait, for example, they can still backdate to that time when they were first affected. And additionally, due to the high call volume, uh, TWC recommends that people call based on a schedule uh, with the first digit of your area code. So for 512, and I can send you this too, for 512, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 to 5 p.m. Okay. Yes, because we did get a, someone uh, submitted a question saying that, you know, they feel like the Texas system is unusable really for unemployment, that they keep trying to call and just can't get anywhere. I guess that's in part because now a lot more people are need unemployment and also are simultaneously eligible for unemployment. Exactly. Okay. And it, it is just an unprecedented influx uh, of calls. I know that yesterday the governor said that legislative Texas legislative staffers would be reassigned to help with the calls. They are hiring hundreds of more people. They are creating more web portals. Um, so, av av you know, we've been inquiring and are being advised that they are taking steps to mitigate that weight. Um, and hopefully this scheduling will work. But, uh, you know, people I would just, you know, con I think uh, also calling really early or late in the day um, could be beneficial. So there are two options, you know, you can call or you can go online. Um, knowing that there is this high volume, um, you know, they are taking some, some steps to try to mitigate it, but I, I still understand it's a frustration and we are still getting those calls daily. Yeah. Um, and then the, the other question that we had come in, um, it's a little vague, and I know that I think you've kind of addressed some of them, but it, it's just um, uh, the question was, are there government assistance programs available for immigrants, undocumented immigrants, or students? You mentioned student, um, mm -hmm. pause on loan payments. Um, anything else, I guess, kind of to address that yeah. question? Sure. So we have this question a lot, um, and considering the makeup of our district, too, which encompasses a lot of the Eastern Crescent, Southeast Travis County, um, what, what resources are available for those folks, um, especially those who may not have been included in the CARES Act? So, uh, you know, the recently approved bill did not provide uh, the same economic assistance to, um, to those with, without, um, wait a second, sorry. Oh, okay, so it did not provide assistance to taxpayers with ITINS, the, which stands for Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. Um, it, ex and it, it excludes, basically it excludes immigrants um, and folks who are really vulnerable uh, during this crisis. And the Congressman is an original co-sponsor of legislation to include those individuals, um, which did not get through. And he believes that every taxpayer, you know, irrespective of citizenship status, should receive this government assistance. Um, to that end, the only progress we've made so far for that population in this relief is the provision of free testing for everyone, including the undocumented, and provision of those stimulus relief checks to dreamers who have a social security number. Because basically, an individual needs to have a social security number and meet the income criteria to get the stimulus check. I got a question about, you know, well, if, if the individual has children who are citizens, can they receive the check? The answer is no. Um, you know, but, but we are hopeful that that can help some of those dreamers with a, with a social. Um, additionally, uh, the Congressman submitted a statement of support this week for the item on the city council agenda today to provide 
$15 million in direct assistance to individuals and families. Um, I know that if it passes, would be split kind of 50-50 between direct assistance and uh, social service providers. So we submitted that statement to city council members and Austin Public Health. Um, right, and I believe the goal of that of that is to help supplement some of what so help the folks that maybe are not getting the federal or state funding. Yeah, and and recognizing that that impacts um, a lot of folks in our district, and uh, it's feedback we're hearing uh, frequently. So. Uh, you know, applauding the city's leadership, you know, the mayor and council and Austin Public Health's leadership and trying to help those folks um, during a really tough time and especially when they are left out of this legislation. And I'm going to look at the student piece. Um, oh, additionally on, on students and schools, I'll just mention for that K to 12, the CARES Act provided more funding for school meals. And I know that is being, you know, distributed down through the states. Um, generally, the CARES Act funding will be distributed down through state agencies, which will then distribute it to local providers. For example, uh, you know, one of the, well, I don't, I don't know if this was CARES, um, but, so I don't know if I'll cite it, but, you know, for example, money that would go through Health and Human Services, um, to go to Central Health and People's Community Clinic, like we, we um, announced yesterday, that goes through the state agency, which then goes to the local provider. So if people have questions on how that money is rolled out, um, and, and we're still, you know, parsing through it. I think we're still determining those funding opportunities. So people have questions, you know, about that, about SBA, Workforce Commission, um, you know, we're here and we're open. And uh, we're all teleworking, but you know, still, still working on our constituents' behalf and happy to answer any questions about CARES um, and take feedback on what people would like to see in the next package um, as well. Okay, and what's the, is there a number, a phone number, I guess, on your website or um, that people should call or email yeah. address that's best to use? Yeah, you can call 512-916-5921. Uh, and um, we have a general email on our website as well, um, email lloyd.doggett at mail.house.gov. But, uh, you know, I think if, you know, feel free to share out this CARES Act document and I'll share the small business one as well. Um, I know a lot of these questions can get really in the weeds, you know, of like a specific employer, I have so many employees, but you know, some of them are independent contractors and, and that kind of thing. Um, like I said, we're happy to, to answer any questions, but, you know, folks might find some um, good information in these too. Um, but really, you know, the point of CARES is to provide that immediate direct assistance to families, individuals, businesses that are hurting. Because um, like I said at the beginning, we know people are hurting and um, with uncertainty as to how long this will all go on, um, we need to provide and know we need to provide more funding to keep people afloat during this really hard time. Yeah, one, one last question. I don't have it on the, on the list, so my apologies. I just made <laughs> no, you, okay. I thought about it while you were talking. You said that the funding for um, testing mm -hmm. um, wasn't it CARES, I guess, but before. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? I know that's like still an issue. People are like, are we doing enough testing? And I know here in sure. Austin, there's been concerns about making sure we have testing like in East Austin, just as much testing in East Austin as we have in West Austin. Um, yep. I'm sure it takes time for that funding to come trickle its way down. But you yeah, um, you know, that's a really good question. I let me find the answer out for you this okay. morning. I can send that over to you yeah, because totally. I, I know you know, I, I do want to give people a concrete answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, I know, were you on the call this morning? The, I call it no, the- No, I missed call. it this morning. Okay. Um, they, they were mentioning, so Central Health, you might have seen, is opening up a drive-through testing site. Mm -hmm. The governor has announced that 15 Walgreens across the state will do drive-through testing. Austin Regional Clinic has been doing some testing. Um, Austin Public Health has some sites, but I don't think those are all available to the public. And as far as what the federal response is to testing, I will call my colleague after this and see, you know, what that looks like, how that's coming down. Um, I know there was some mention last week that the Trump administration was considering 
covering have like having hospitals cover uninsured people who get treatment for COVID, but I don't know if that's inclusive of testing. Um, and I don't know what traction that has gotten besides a press conference last week. So um, I'll call my colleague Afton uh, right after this and get you an answer on that. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, that's sure. I've just been hearing buzz about that, you know. Mm -hmm. as I'm yeah, <laughs> right, right. And, you know, knowing that um, a lot of people are asking, you know, <laughs> and, and how, like, we just, I mean, I think that the, again, sort of, you know, the frontline um, approach to this is putting the health and safety of our constituents and our neighbors first, uh, you know, whether that's uh, physical, mental, or economic health. And testing is certainly a part of that to keep people healthy, you know, ease anxiety um, and limit exposure. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I really appreciate it. I think that was helpful. Yes. And um, I'll make sure I'll share that um, Great. The little document you sent. And if you have any others that are kind of that, that style for the public, yeah. uh, we'll share them mm -hmm. as well. Great. I'll send those to you and then I'll get an answer on testing to you this morning. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, right, Amy. Thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye.